Okay, in this time lapse uh, video uh, demonstration, I'm going to show you how to model a Guy Fawkes mask uh, using some of the conventional uh, mesh modeling tools in Blender. So, what you see right here is uh, I have already prepared an uh, image reference uh, from uh, images that I found on the internet. And I first start off by creating a plane and I mirrored it. I use some edge loops, uh, then uh, to increase the number of details so that I can start to position them over the, uh, the reference images. Now if you wish to know how to set up the image references, you can look at my other videos, uh, especially on the one uh, setting the uh, model plane modeling tutorials. So you can check those out. So you can see right here, uh, I'm using the uh, rather traditional method of just uh, creating the uh, vertices and the edges and then just simply moving moving them according to the reference uh, images uh, that you see here. Okay, for me, I try my best to follow the edge loops uh, or the muscle flow. Okay, what you see right here is uh, I created a eye loop and then I used the uh, verify control to give it a slightly rounded uh, look for the uh, the eye eye loop area. Okay, so uh, try as try your best to use uh, all the tools capability of Blender. Okay, or rather the uh, capabilities of Blender to uh, assist you in modeling this uh, mask. Now, before I did this uh, demonstration, I actually modeled uh, two previous uh, masks and. Uh, the, the first version uh, uh, was just an experiment. The second one took about uh, a couple of hours. Now this one took me about uh, about four, four, slightly over 40 minutes and because I'm already familiar where I need to put the vertices and the edge loops. The key here is try to follow the uh, a good facial topology. Okay, taking note of loops that go around the mouth and uh, notice the nose, uh, the edge of the nose there, there's a loop that comes out and then goes right beneath the mouth. And the mouth itself, the opening of the mouth itself, also form a circular loop. Now if you want to find good uh, topology references, you can just look for uh, uh, face topology, just uh, Google face topology. And you should be able to find a lot of uh, good facial topology examples. Granted that this is a mask and um, you don't expect to animate the mask, but uh, it is a good practice to try to always model uh, the face in following the flow of the muscles. Okay, as you can see here, I created the loop for the mouth and what I did was I selected uh, the loop and then I just simply extruded it and scaled it up slightly. And after that, it's just a matter of manually shifting them into place. Now, there is no secret or shortcut in modeling a face. The thing is, you have to practice. Okay, You don't get to this stage uh, of uh, proficiency overnight. So uh, for beginning modelers, don't, don't be disheartened. Because I can tell you that the first time I modeled a human head, that was... Uh, Many, many years ago, I was using uh, another software package called Soft Image, and I was using NURBS to model. And it started off as a circle or a sphere. And that took me almost four days to model. Okay, and my first head doesn't look that good. And so it's just practice. Just keep on practicing and uh, keep on uh, looking at references. Look at good modeling demonstrations and then just keep on practicing and then uh, you will become good eventually okay so as you can see i'm trying my best to follow the uh, structure of the face and if you have the actual guy fox mask itself that would be a great asset because you can take uh, proper pictures and use them as references and if you have the mask you can actually feel the where it bulges and where where are the creases on the surface Okay, so if you don't have it, so then you have to use your own judgment uh, to figure out which part of the face uh, sticks out and which part uh, form a crease. All right, so uh, this again, it really depends on your own experience and your own judgment. 
So again, this comes from uh, practice. You have to uh, practice by modeling as uh, many faces as possible and in fact consult uh, references that's available. And as you can see here, the I'm right now applying uh, an extrusion around the eye loop and then I'm moving the, the, the region on the right based on uh, your view of the, the loop and then pushing it back a little. In fact, you can look at a mirror and look at your own face and use it as a reference. And uh, I'm also using a technique where I turn on this auto merge and uh, holding down to control and left mouse click over uh, a selected vertex, you can actually snap them and auto merge them. So this will actually speed up your uh, modeling process and uh, in a way, it's, it's something like uh, doing stitching, right? You can uh, extrude out and then stitch. And if you observe carefully, uh, I have the habit of just uh, selecting the vertices and then extruding them, and then uh, select the edges and then pressing F to fill them up. So this is another fast way of creating surfaces. And here, I just select the loop and then I just press E. And uh, if you notice, carefully almost every vertice you see here on this example will have will be moved at least once so there's no avoiding so uh, that's why i do not want to play this uh, demonstration at real time uh, the whole video itself is almost 15 minutes long so uh, i don't want to bore you the details okay so i'll just basically narrate over this demonstration and uh, tell you about the uh, techniques that i've used Okay, so once you're happy with the mask, uh, you select the center and then you uh, scale it until it's flat and then you turn on clipping in your mirror to let them stick together. And um, I'm fairly happy with this. Now, take note that uh, in order for this demonstration, I'm not really applying a lot of detail on this mask. So if you really want to make a super detailed mask, you'll probably have to spend at least uh, two to three hours. So right now, I'm using a technique of trying to uh, bulge out certain areas. So as you can see, I applied a subdivision modifier. And then I use this unique feature, or uh, rather not really unique, uh, uh, um, or a method of manipulating the vertices. Instead of using the global to move the vertice, I I'm using the normals of the vertices. And this will actually manipulate the vertex in its normal so it is a very good to use it to pull out the detail so that you can uh, give it definition because uh, sometimes because uh, of the limited reference that I have uh, certain areas of the mask are not modeled properly so you will still have to go to a, a 3d view like this and move it around and then use your own judgment to pull out the details until you get it right so this generally is the more time consuming part and you'll notice that this mask the general level of detail is not very high and that is one area that you need to take note of when you are modeling organic objects you want to try to keep the base level as low as possible so that you don't have too much detail to tweak around so it is a balance and there is no fixed rule of how much detail you should use uh, I mean, some people, they can work on very, very high levels of detail and then they'll use the proportional editing to edit it. Okay, right now what I'm doing here is uh, I'm happy with my mask. So right now I'm assigning a UV projection, front projection. And then I'm using the reference image itself uh, as a texture map. So I'm using the proportional editing to move the UVs until it fits the image. And once I turn on shaded mode, and I actually got a very good looking mask. And uh, right now I'm assigning the UV texture assignments uh, for the material so that when I render it, I should be able to see it. And uh, over here I actually have my previous mask on so that you can see it behind. So what I did later was I deleted away that mask so that I can only see the new mask. Now for this mask, I didn't assign any uh, solid shell to it or solid solidify modifier. And you can actually do that uh, yourself. And finally, I want to show you uh, what you can do with this mask using uh, cycles. So I rendered a mask in the cycles. And uh, so that's it. And thanks for watching.